OpenAI released an AI-assisted browser called Atlas. Let's take a quick look at it and see if it is worth using or not. So first we got to install it. It is for the time being Mac only. After the app is installed, we can open it up and confirm to macOS that we are sure we want to use it. After the welcome screen is shown, we need to log in before we continue. Usually I would now stop and remove the app from my computer, but for the sake of this video, let me quickly log in using my Google account. After login, we get a couple of onboarding screens explaining the features of the browser. Luckily, you can skip them if you want. Finally, the browser is loaded and we are presented with the start screen which looks like the default new chat screen of ChatGPT. The overall look is clean which I do like a lot. Before we do anything, let's first go to the settings and try to turn off any telemetry options. In the general tab, we have the option to show the full URL in the address bar. While we're at it, let me turn that on. Nothing interesting in the web browsing section. Personalization also looks good for now. Probably in the data controls we might have something. Indeed, let's first make sure to turn off the improve the model for everyone, which is turned off in my setup. I believe this comes from your ChatGPT website settings. We also definitely need to turn off the help improving and search switch. Finally, let's double check the agent mode options. Okay, now we got that out of the way, let's open a website. I'm going to paste a link in the input field and it looks like it recognizes this as an URL and offers open the website. Now that the website is loaded, we can open the Ask Chat GPT section and ask to summarize it. This works pretty well. Maybe a bit too long for a summary, so let's ask to shorten it up. Excellent. Let's load another page and ask a question about the content. As expected, ChatGPT delivers. Similar as in the web version, we can use the plus sign to check other options. When we hover with the mouse over the items, it does show how many credits we have. I do have a plus account and probably in the free tier the credits would be less. In my opinion, the current caps of 25 for deep search and 40 for agent modes are on the low side, especially as the agent mode is one of the selling arguments for this browser. By the way, if you're a developer, the Chrome developer tools are still available for you. Next up, I'm going to explore the agent mode. First, I'll ask ChatGPT to explain its own capabilities. As you can see, it describes being able to perform multi-step tasks. To put that to the test, let's use the example it just gave us and have it find a hotel in Amsterdam. I'll turn on the agent mode and ask the question. As this is the first time using agent mode, it asks how to proceed. I'll choose the log in option, but probably it would not matter that much because I have not yet logged in to any website. There it goes. It's not the fastest, but looks like it has some issues getting rid of the cookie banner, but after two minutes, it has found some options for me. I'm pretty sure these would not be the hotels that I would have chosen. Let's now try to find a place to eat. Again, it took about two minutes and it did indeed find some options. Would these be the restaurants I would visit? Probably not. The idea of the agent mode is cool, but for now it feels more like a gimmick. Probably the more you use the browser, the better it might get, as it would probably have a better memory of which websites you use. Anyway, let's try the cursor chat. You should be able to select a piece of text and work on the selected text. For some reason, I was not able to get this to work. The Atlas browser is based on Chromium, the same engine as Chrome, so let's check if it can install extensions, and according to ChatGPT itself, that should be possible. In a new tab, let's go to the Chrome Web Store. As you noticed, instead of using the chat interface, you can also directly search for a website using the address bar. I'll try to add the uBlock Lite extension. Well, the wheel keeps spinning, and I'm guessing this is not going to work. When we go to the settings, under web browsing, there is an option for extensions. When we click on that, it opens a new tab with the installed extensions in Atlas. As you can see, it redirects to the Chrome Web Store to install extensions. So let me try installing another extension. 
Again, the installation keeps spinning and trying multiple times did not work. It even at some point shows the message that the extension was installed without being actually installed. It looks like that this feature of Atlas is still in development. Finally, let's test the browser memory. I'll ask for a summary of the sites I visited today. The summary seems to be correct and I like how it grouped the sites. I always have fun with these add-on questions ChatGPT generates and then miserably fails to deliver what it proposed itself. From all the features, I think the browser memory will be the most useful. To conclude, the Atlas browser is definitely not yet mature and the advertised features feel more like a gimmick to me. Before you plan to use it, check out the article I provided in the description. It clearly explains what it actually is. While it will be interesting to see how this develops, I personally didn't find any added value in it over the existing ChatGPT web interface. I tried the browser, but I'm sticking with my regular browser. Thanks again for tuning in and see you in the next video.